at one point, I felt like I didn't even have a life. Like I hated my life, you know, because I was just like so dedicated to this, you know, and just like I just wanted to make it so bad. You mm. know? So like, yeah, just countless hours. That sacrifice. Yeah. So you go down to Florida, and then you're not really feeling the school thing. But are you starting to like go to shows, or like, what's your opinion on hip hop out there? Um, so like. Honestly, like before I went to South Florida, like I never really attended shows like that. You know, it just wasn't a thing. Like, mm. like my group of friends, like in Jersey, like we would go to clubs and parties, but like never like really rap shows. You right. Know? So um, yeah, like once I, you know, once I got down there and I linked up with Denzel, you know, I got you know introduced to the whole underground scene and like you know, um, at, like that was like when ASAP Rocky first came out, the whole ASAP Mob thing, you know, Raider Clan, so. That was all new to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that whole, like, it just felt like an underground world mm. that like the mainstream just wasn't really aware of yet. Yeah, and it was it like, like, it was weird because it was like all of a sudden that Florida, that SoundCloud era all of a sudden made it like underground rap felt really, really cool in that moment. Like it just felt yeah. different. I remember going to see uh, like Wi-Fi and Pump and 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 uh, like Young Simi, like maybe six months before Pump started blowing up. Mm -hmm. And it was like the energy in that room and just a random ass, I think it was in West Palm Beach or something. Yeah, yeah. The energy was insane. And yeah. it, it just felt like, holy shit, this is really important. Like there's so much interesting shit going on out here. Yeah, no, nah, I feel the same way. Like it was definitely like like something fresh and new, you know, like it felt like we had the power, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like we, we had the power of just like, of like, gaining attention from the masses like that's what it felt like you know right definitely um so when you were looking at so how'd you meet denzel um so i met denzel curry through a, a mutual friend from uh one of the colleges that i attended okay and um and denzel's like basically unknown at this point but did you hear his stuff and you were like, no nah, i mean I, I totally had no idea but like he for sure was known just like on the internet. The Raider though. Clan shit. Yeah, yeah just yeah, like okay. literally like Raider Clan and just like YouTube and like a little SoundCloud stuff. Not like the way we are know him now, but he definitely yeah. had a, a, a Florida buzz for he sure. He definitely yeah. had like, yeah, he definitely had some buzz to where it's like, all right, like I want to work with him. Like, I see, you know, he has a big future. Right. So like that was that. Um, but yeah, so I met him through like one of the homies and he was like, yo, I know about this kid named Denzel Curry from like the hood out here in Miami. And we just like linked. Uh, I think Simi had like a video shoot and then my homie like drove me over there and Denzel was there and that was the first time we linked up. Mm. And so did you guys hit it off on like a personal level or was it more just like a musical thing where he needed a, a good producer at that time and you were you were hungry for, for a rapper who could do justice to the beats you were making? Yeah, I think it was more like about like the music, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't really like super personal just yet, but it became personal because... Mm. It was like an everyday, it was like a lifestyle thing, you know, like once, like once we dropped threats and we realized like, all right, bet, like this could be like a career for us. Then it became like, you know, like, you know, like a part of our everyday routine. <laughs> really? So you guys were recording a shitload back then? Yeah. yeah we always been like working. Did sure. it, did it spiral into like you working with a ton of other artists from that scene? Like how did you eventually end up working with guys like X and Ski and shit? Yeah. So like, I mean, I never really like, I never really planned on just being like, for one artist, just like, you know how like, you know, an artist has like their one producer and vice versa. Uh -huh. So I never really planned for it to be like that. But, you know, from me working with Denzel and making great stuff, that that made everyone else want to work with me too, that he was around from South Florida. So yeah, it just kind of like trickled down to everybody else, you know, they just like heard, you know, like, oh, Ronnie, Ronnie, whatever, distortion, all that, so. Right, yeah. so in term, when you say distortion, it's interesting because it's like a lot of people, when they think about like distorted rap music, they think about X. Yeah. And they don't necessarily like go back and trace it to like SGP or Denzel or all these different sounds that were kind of coming out at that time. Was there any kind of like conscious conversation between you and Denzel about what he wanted aesthetically, that he wanted something grimier that had that sort of distorted vibe to it? Um, I think, bro, like I think when I first went down there and I, I realized, you know, I learned about Raider Clan and stuff like that. I think like my sound and like their sound, it's just like food, like it just like. It just like fused together, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I for sure paid attention. I realized oh, like, okay, like their sound is more like dirty, like mm. underground, it's not super clean. And then when I was making beats, when I first started making beats, I was just making them, you know, just like not even trying to overthink it. And it just came out like that, you know? Cause like I never knew how to mix. So, you know, everyone thought I was doing things on purpose, but mm. really like, I didn't know what I was doing like that, you know? <laughs> See, that's interesting. Cause a lot of like the rappers who came out and people were sort of, you know, crediting them with doing all this distorted beats and shit like that. You know, there was like certain pump songs where the bass just sounded so crazy. Yeah. But it seems like almost everybody sort of like cleaned up their style over time. And then, you know, and you have seen stuff like you've seen, like, am I right that Kanye kind of like took the distorted bass thing and ran with it to a certain extent too? 
I mean, like when though? Like recently or past couple of years? Yeah, past couple of years. Um, but not in the exact same way. But I feel like he sort of and, and a few other like people they kind of like adapted some of that feel without maybe yeah. necessarily making it so abrasive. Got you. As far as Ye, like I'm not really sure. Like I've I know Ye and like I've been around him like personally. So like I just know like he's so like in his own world. You mm -hmm. know, like he's definitely like aware. You know, as you can see, he worked with Pump. You know, um, Melly. So like he's he's aware, but he's so like in his own world as well. So like um, <clears throat> I know for a fact he was like he was for sure inspired by X, you know, like the stuff that we did and, and stuff like that. But um, I'm not really too sure about the distortion part with him. I don't so, know. so you go from working with Denzel. How do you end up meeting X and Ski and that whole shit? Because I'm sure that there's stories associated with that time period. It was crazy, bro. Uh, so you know, me and Denzel, we were working at that at that point. I moved in with him um, inside the URT house. That's what we like to call it, the URT house, like mm -hmm. a unity type of thing. Mm -hmm. It felt like a clubhouse, you know like a frat house. So, you know, time passed by and then um, we had this house party and X and Ski, someone told X and Ski that they can um, perform at our house party. Mm. So they just like pulled up and they thought they were gonna, you know, just like go crazy. And then Zell was just like, nah, like y'all can't perform here, but y'all could come in. So then that was like the first time we met them and it was cool. Like, you know, it was a house party vibe, whatever. I don't really like remember like really interacting with them like that night, cause I was hella lit, <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> Yeah, bro. Then after that, I remember like they came back like the next day or a few days later and uh, they were just like talking with Denzel and like Denzel was just like trying to like give them game. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, Denzel was like bigger than them. Like, and they were so raw. And, like, did that stand out? Like, holy <clears throat> shit, these dudes are crazy. It was like, crazy, bro. Like, it was kind of like they came to a party, you know what I'm saying? And then like, I don't know, like Denzel just kept playing their music. And like, mm. you know, like when Denzel loves somebody, he just like, you know, he'll let you know. So he just kept playing their music and I'm right there. So I'm like, yeah, like, I fuck with it. Tell them slide, you know. Mm. So then once they came, the second time that they came, um, that was the that was that was the first time he asked me to song. Oh really? Yeah. Which was song cool. was that? Um, it's called In the Dirt. Okay. Yeah. And it was it was one of the early ones on his SoundCloud? Uh nah, so I think I think I dropped it on my SoundCloud. Oh, okay. So it's Yoshi Tompkins featuring X produced by me. Okay. And, yeah. and so what was your wait before you met him did you know him as being a dude who was fucking people up in these videos that were going viral <laughs> on twitter and shit i i knew like yeah like everything happened so fast kind of but like um i knew that like yeah like this like he's a little crazy reckless kid yeah because yeah. i always think about that how it's so crazy that he's considered to be you know like one of the most influential rappers yeah. of the generation but i literally knew about him for like a couple months uh -huh. from just being like that little fucking dude who's fucking people up on twitter and just you know there was because there's like when you watch those videos it's like you see rob banks like in the video and shit so it's so obvious that this is going down like at florida rap shows yeah, yeah, yeah. and that like it was just so fascinating to me i always kind of like discount that when i talk about like when i met him and stuff that i had kind of known about him for a little while even though i didn't yeah. know his name yeah, and nah, it's crazy yeah um i mean before like the party i didn't really know too much about them um i was honestly surprised i was like damn like i didn't know like there was like other kids like right around our way mm. just like doing their thing too you know i thought it was like just us and that really just like, you know, made me realize like how much influence we had down there too, you know? Cause like they were inspired by everything that we did as well. So. Right. What was it like working with XO? Did he stand out to you in terms of just his fucking manic, intense personality? Did it like make any particular impression on you when you were working together? Or did he just jump on whatever beat you played for him? <laughs> um, so yeah, like working with him is definitely one of a kind. It was, you know, my all time favorite. Um, I can't compare it to anyone else. The energy for sure is, you know, um, Unco uncomparable, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he for sure has influence, you know, on my life, my music. Um, and really he was just like, you know, just always like one of the realest with me, mm -hmm. you know, cause like I make music as well. And like, he just always like supported that, you know, not just like, oh, Ronnie beats, beats, beats. Like it wasn't like that, right? you know, he's really like, he's really like on a, on a more like personal level. It wasn't just like music. He wanted to make music together, not just hop on a beat. Sometimes he would though. Mm. Like he was so diverse, bro. You know, he went from heavy distortion to like just all type of stuff. You know, like pop stuff, like you know, radio hits. <laughs> right, and so. I, I remember being surprised when like his albums came out and they had so much soft music on it. But really, it's like even when I did that interview, he asked me straight up. He's like, "You heard my rock stuff, right? You, <laughs> you heard my acoustic shit." Like you, like he from day one, he was like trying to go outside that rapper category. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Like, yeah, I believe that. He always had like diverse stuff you know it's right. just like the the heavy distorted stuff was just like you know kids want to rage like that's what they 
that's just what was like more popular in the yeah, beginning. So definitely. What about Ski though? Did he make an impression on you? Because I feel like Ski sometimes gets under discussed because yeah. like Ski really what he's accomplished is incredible and his music's amazing and it's like he's made such a big imprint. It's like he was benefited from being X's friend, but at the same time it's kind of weird to be sort of like in in the shadow of that in a way. You know, I feel that um, <clears throat> I think they're both like equally talented, like in their own ways. You know, they both bring great things to the table. And I think it was like a real, like a really like beautiful thing, bro. Like just seeing them like together, you know, because mm. like not everyone like seen that or like was around that, you know. Um, I know at one point, you know, people seen that they kind of had like whatever issues. But like I know deep down the side, they really do love each other. They always have. And like their brothers, like that's how I met them, you know, like mm. together. Yeah, I think in a situation like that, it's important. It's almost like a reminder is that, you know, don't don't have petty beefs with your friends. Yeah, no, definitely not. And, you know, you should no, always no. forgive everyone no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Even if you, you don't got to be cool with them, you know, always forgive them. And just make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them because, mm -hmm. like, anything is possible. Facts. So do you remember when when their music started really blowing up some particular songs that you would produce for them because it must have been like the song like th those must have been some of your biggest songs at that time blowing up right what, yeah. what was that whole process like um i mean so <laughs> like one of the biggest ones is sipping tea right and yeah that was like insane like i remember that day it was like a summer summer day and i was just in my room just like cooking up you know just like making a beat and the bass was so crazy bro like I, it just like i was like i knew i knew that it was something you know Cause like, I remember just being in my room and being so excited about it. And then he just like got home. Cause I, at that point he was like living with me or whatever, right. living like with me Denzel. And uh, he just like walked to my room and was like, yo Ronnie, I think I got something for this. And um, that was at the time when he was like beefing with Perp, Space Coast mm. Perp. So then- Inspired uh, a lot of angry ass <laughs> music, yeah. Yeah, uh, honestly bro, like back around that time, like he was just like, he was like doing all that on purpose. Uh. You know? like, he just knew, he knew that, okay, like if I talk shit about this dude, it's gonna go viral on the internet. Really? You know what I'm saying? Because people love, you know, people love that type of energy. So, but like, that's very early, and he was very young to yeah. know that it would have that kind of effect. You yeah, know? like he, like bro, like he just always knew what he was doing. Like everything, he always knew, bro. Damn, that's interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. Um. Okay, and so, but like in particular, like a lot of his weird lyrics kind of stand out. Like sipping tea. You ever actually see him drink tea? It was kind of hard to imagine. Nah, but I, I think he was talking <laughs> about like the uh, the Arizona. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Cuz like, bro, like That makes sense to me. Bro, he loved going to the corner store. Like he would walk to the corner store and get like the hot popcorn oh and like just God. mad snacks and candy like yeah. That's so funny to picture him being able to do that cuz like the latter part of his life he he couldn't really just go to the corner store like it was all good. Hell not, but it's crazy, bro. There's so much we could say about him. But that was also back when I think it was like the little meme of like the little frog sipping tea, you know? Oh yeah. So it was like around that time. And I think he was on he was on a vibe like nigga, like I'm on your block chilling and I'm sipping tea. What up? Right. Like, you know? So You don't know who the white bitch you gotta throw a fuck at Starbucks was, right? <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> well, that shit probably real though. <laughs> probably was, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that was like the first lyric I ever heard from that I was like, what the fuck? That's a yeah. weird ass thing to say. Who is this dude? That shit probably real. That's real crazy. Real.